Did you know he had one? I bought that one. Wait, I knew she said I bought that. Spam right here is Dr. Peter Tripp. The 29-year-old was one of our neighbors who was loved by so many. He died back in April after jumping off the William Howard Taft Bridge in D.C. The day after he jumped, I remember looking at my friend in our living room and um, just saying, I'm getting a barrier on that bridge. I learned very quickly that nothing was comforting, uh, but I did find comfort in um, the advocacy. I looked through the suicide barrier of the Ellington Bridge to, uh, when I first saw Peter's police lights, so it was just, um, just struck me that I was standing on the bridge with the barrier and, you know, he jumped off the one without it. Peter was solid. He was the guy that you could always go to and, and nothing bothered him. Everything rolled off his back. The entire time I knew him, so generous, he, he, would, he would literally give you, he gave, he gave someone his shoes once. You know, he didn't say much, but what he did say was really witty. <laughs> it was always like, you could tell he was intelligent when he talked. And I just wanted to be around him. Male veterinarians are, are about three times as likely as the general population to kill themselves, and then female veterinarians are four times as likely and it takes a lot of work to separate your self-worth from your job as a veterinarian. And that can kill you. I had first reached out to the commissioner made the resolution and, and it passed unanimously in, in our ward, or our ANC. But after the resolutions are passed is when the real work begins. Once there is a decision to get the barrier up, it's then they hire a consultant who then designs it, but then they have to propose that to the Fine Arts Commission board, I believe. There are people that I I'm dealing with now who are the reason the Taft doesn't have a barrier. Now it is true that in the 80s when I was an ANC commissioner, I did participate in litigation to stop the city from putting barriers on both the Ellington and Taft bridges. The argument with the Ellington bridge is that the ANC had not been consulted and the city took the position that it didn't need to. Uh, as an ANC commissioner, our ANC at that time said there were more effective ways to stop suicide, as I recall, and that the research was virtually non-existent about whether barriers actually deterred somebody from suicide or simply deterred them from suicide at that place. Most people don't shift, and if, they, if one method is not available, they don't typically shift to another method. So it's hard for people in general when they're severely depressed to go to a plan B because they're thinking it's just too slow down and it's hard to think of alternative plans. And the best method for preventing suicide is limiting access to means, any means. And so while that would cover bridges and bridges is not a common way for people to complete suicide, it is a way people do that. So anything you can do to reduce the likelihood that people have access to lethal means is important. And and it's not that they may never kill themselves, but it is the gift of time where they can then maybe get help. Someone else has asked me, um, is this going to be enough? Um, and no, it's not. And, and just, there's, there's a bill um, in Congress right now 
basically doing what I'm trying to do here on a national scale, where it's called the Barriers to Suicide Act. And so I think once you know I'm satisfied with all the bridges in DC being safe, um, I'll focus like my my efforts on that. You know I can't save Peter's life, but I can save other people's lives, and, and it's going to be his legacy. I want this to be his legacy.